smaller brands, um, wanting to be everything to everyone. You can't. You can't talk to everybody and you can't be everything to everyone. It's impossible. And I love this term, I guess. If everything is urgent, then nothing is urgent. It's the same sort of idea. If you're talking to everybody, you're talking to nobody. Angie, it's great to have you here. Thank you for coming on to the channel. Thank you so much for having me, Brian. I'm excited for this conversation. Now, um, maybe we can just start by introducing yourself, maybe your background, your professional background, how we know each other and what your current role is. Sure. So my name is Bridget and I'm in digital marketing and copywriting. And Brian and I, we worked, you and I, we worked together at Vega all the years ago. It was really great to connect with you there. And I'm looking forward to talking to you today. Fantastic. And, and what's your current role right now? Um, what do you, what's keeping you busy? It's keeping me busy. Uh, my, my kids keep me busy. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Uh, um, yeah, right now I'm doing some freelance work uh, in copywriting and digital marketing support Fantastic. for a uh, more smaller brand, which is great. Perfect. That's that's the ideal audience, uh, especially on this channel. They're the small startups. They're the entrepreneurs that have this grand idea. They want to bring it to life. They just need some help or some support on, on, on making that happen. So let's kind of get started with this whole idea of t telling the brand story and maybe a little bit of marketing copy from what i understand there are like these two worlds of branding and you can correct me if i'm wrong there's the world of coca-cola png where it's like how do you build that brand recognition that gut feel that perception of a brand you know having them always top of mind and then there's that other world of like just direct response marketing which is infomercials you know for me it was the rompo peel the oxy clean guy oh. <laughs> right and there's that element there's that world of a copy and marketing and branding. Let's start there. Where do you sit on that? I um, had a Ronco, Ronco food dehydrator. Just want to throw that out there. Um, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I sit uh, more on the business to consumer side. Um, so front facing messaging, um, all matters of copy, website copy, all the front end stuff, social, email, all of that. Um, so more like the inbound consumer marketing. Yeah. So let's start with this. What makes a great brand story? Oh, I love this question. Uh, the easiest answer would be authenticity. So telling your actual story rather than what you think people might want to hear or what you think might get you funding or customers or anything like that, but really telling especially as an entrepreneur, why you started the company and really keeping in mind that it is a story, right? So you need a beginning, a middle and an end and just be being authentic, being you and, and conveying your message. You know, what's funny is more, more recent is this whole idea of chat GBT and utilizing that. What are your thoughts on chat no, GBT? No, hard pass, hard pass. That is the opposite of authenticity. Uh, it is. I have played around in it just to see like what the results are. And it just sounds robotic. So it's a great source, I think, of inspiration. If you're stuck on an idea, maybe how do I write this better? Or how do I convey this message? It's an, an excellent tool and a resource to use. Do not copy paste from chat <laughs> GPT. People will know. It's it's very apparent. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, what do you think? Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Dave Ramsey. He's like the budget finance guy. I see him on YouTube and I'm a huge follower of his and he talks about AI and chat GPT and he's made the intentional effort of we want real people from a customer service standpoint we want people to pick up the phone and talk to a person like he that was very intentional for his business model and you know I thought that was very smart of him because right now it's like a sea of chat GPT everyone's talking about it they're trying to leverage that they all, everyone wants to be a, a company of one if you will like automate the heck out of their business and be hands off and like I don't think that's a realistic thing and you're right I think chat GPT does sound generic all these other other factors but I think if you want to stand out do the opposite and I, <laughs> part of that is not using chat GPT to a certain degree very good I think I think so too. Human connection, right? That's what connects people to a brand is that actual yeah. hands-on human connection. And it just, it's flat without it. What do you think makes a great brand story? You talked about the beginning, middle, end. What are, you know, what are some of the elements of that? So definitely being authentic to who you are and your brand and knowing who you're talking to is really important. Who is your, who is your target audience essentially? Who are you talking to? And then explaining to them in an emotional way that's concise, but like emotionally evocative, I guess I would say, mm. that gets people thinking and engaged, easy to understand. How about an example of, 
provocative. Yeah. What's something that caught your mind? It doesn't have to be in the supplement or food space, but just in general, is, was there anything that you found was provocative and kind of intriguing and, oh, interesting. Maybe I can, you know, brands should incorporate that into their into their strategy. I think that a good example in the industry would be like AG1, Athletic Greens. <laughs> Not saying the product is great, um, but it's everywhere and it's big and it's bold and you cannot miss it. And they are selling, truly what they're selling is influence and their medium just so happens to be the supplement product, but they're bold and everywhere. You cannot miss them. You can't. Yeah, it's, it's the podcast. <laughs> it's they're there. You see a billboard. They're there. You're getting an ad on your phone. It, they're hard to miss. Yeah, agree. Very good. Um, this is an obvious one, but I'm really curious, like to the lay person, it may seem obvious, uh, but I'm really curious to hear your point of view. What is the purpose or intention of copy? Truly to engage with someone and compel them to do whatever it is that you're asking of them. So if you are selling a product, for example, you want to engage with them so they know who you are and what you're offering. And then at the end of the day, you want them to buy into what you're selling. Yeah. And, and are there like typical mistakes or um, not so great practice that you see time and time again? Yes. Especially with smaller brands um, wanting to be everything to everyone. You can't. You can't talk talk to everybody and you can't be everything to everyone. It's impossible. And I love this term, I guess. If everything is urgent, then nothing is urgent. It's the same sort of idea. If you're talking to everybody, you're talking to nobody. So that's a really big mistake. And then being too cluttered with the information. And I think that that originates from wanting to be everything for everyone. Mm. You know, you're, you're throwing keywords in and you're using big terms like boost and without any sort of real meaning, it just gets really cluttered and confused using and you lose people almost immediately. Yeah. Is, do you think there's like a sweet spot in terms of how many features or points to hit on, or is it just more of a subjective thing or a gut feel on your end? It depends on who you're talking to and what it is that you want them to know, right? If you're talking to scientists or doctors, you're going to have to have a lot of statement of facts and claims and all of the data and, and information because they're going to want that right away. But if you're talking to a consumer who's just seen you on their phone or, you know, you're getting retail staff to talk about your brand, you want it to be like one simple thing. Who am I talking to? What do they need? And how does this product service that? Yeah, it's it's interesting. Two things. First of all, you're not the first to say, you know, say one thing, stick to one thing, be known for that one thing. You can't be everything to everyone. Um, that seems to be a very common theme that comes up over and over again. And I think everyone needs to be reminded of that. It's very easy for a brand to just say, well, I've got X ingredient and it does this, 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 and this, which could be true, but it gets all, it gets diluted. And I think philosophically, like if you stand for everything, you kind of stand for nothing, which is kind of like what you were saying earlier. Yeah. And I, and I know this is a little bit controversial, but you know, some businesses I've seen, they'll, they might take a very right conservative leaning stance and then others take a left leaning stance, but the idea is, okay, now they've kind of put the flag in the ground and said, here's where I'm at. And they're going to get supporters. And of course, you're going to get people that oppose to it. But that's kind of part of the game, if you will. I, I don't know how to say that. But there's something there's something there that really brings people to you. There's that connection, etc. I do appreciate that, whatever side it is, because you know where you stand. And then you can move accordingly from there. I think that one of sort of the things that got me interested in education and products and then now marketing and copywriting is really just giving people more education. Because if you have that information, then you can act accordingly, right? So if you know where someone stands and it's completely opposed to where you stand, it's a very easy decision. Or mm. if they're right in line with you, it's a very easy decision the other way around. So um, I appreciate people that take a very firm stance one way or another on whatever the subject, even if I don't yeah. agree, I, even if I very strongly disagree with what it is that they're believing in. Yeah, I get it. Um, what separates good copy from bad copy? Not using chat GTP uh, would separate <laughs> very easily. <laughs> um, not being robotic, um, being clear and concise and really knowing who you're talking to is, is super, super important. I can't, I can't stress that enough. And so let's just say I'm, I'm starting out. I think I know who I'm talking to, but it's quite possible. I don't, 
what are some ways for me to figure that out? Who is my real audience or how can I get a better sense of who my audience is? So if you're just starting out, you can rely on other brands in your industry, not to copy them, of course, um, but to sort of look at the category that you're trying to enter into and who's typically buying from there. Um, if you have even just a small base of customers or people that are interested in your product, I would ask them, hmm. who are you? What do you want? What do you need? If it's 10 people, that's much better than trying to guess or just doing what ABC brand beside you is doing. You have real information. I am this, this, and this, and this is what's important to me. You will talk to them and you will find more of them. Yeah, I think there's that element of just asking that I yeah, think is a little ask. bit intimidating. Maybe you're scared to hear what they have to say, right? There's, there could be that element, True. Yeah. but um, yeah. you know, it's part of the journey and rather you find out now <laughs> when you're small than when you've poured a ton of money into a campaign that might not work or or who knows what, or even if a bigger audience and then you really mess that up. Um, what about writing for copy for websites versus social or for something else? What are some of the key good practices or differences between those different platforms? So I think consistency is really important and messaging consistency. Um, this was something that was really important to us at Vega, for example, um, a style guide or brand book is really important for this type of thing. And it can be as little as are we a they are or a their mm. brand? Are we heavy into slang and lingo and emojis? Or are we very straightforward, simple language? You really have to understand and that comes back to who you're talking to. Um, but that consistency is really important. And you, it might not seem that people will notice, but they will. They'll notice that you know, on social media, you don't use any punctuation, but in your web copy you do and it's very professional. There's kind of like a, a disconnect there. So keeping that sort of theme and brand tone consistent across all channels. And then you'll modify, of course, social is going to be short and snappy and your web copy might be a little bit more detailed, but you have that underlying feeling, that underlying tone that's consistent throughout. Yeah. And, and for the audience that doesn't know, what what is a style guide? It can be a simple one page sheet of this is the type of punctuation that we use. This is the, the tone of voice that we use. It's basically just a general guideline of how you communicate and where. And you can go yeah. in more with it. You can get down to like, we use these slang terms and not these slang terms. We use two emojis only. We put the period, then the emoji. You could go on and on and on and on and on, but really having that basis to stand from. Even as simple as, do we use Canadian English or U.S. English? Is it flavor or flavor with a U.R.? You have to decide because all of that plays a role in who you are as a brand. This element of consistency, professionalism, I mean, treat it like a resume almost, right? Like keeping exactly. that consistency is, is a reflection upon you and your brand. Very good. I love that. Let's just say uh, a client wants to work with you. What does that process look like in terms of how does that how does it happen? What are the key considerations for you? What do you look for in the brand in order to make the copy? What are the key important elements that uh, that you have to have uh, before you start? An understanding of what the product is, who the company is, and who they're talking to is really important. And oftentimes companies don't know. So that's a really great starting place is who is it that we're talking to and what is it that we're providing? Um, I have an intake form that asks sort of outlines these sort of key questions. And I found in my past experience, it's some brands are like, I don't know. I don't know the answer to this question, but it gets you thinking. It's like a journal prompt, right? It gets you thinking about, oh, well, who am I talking to? What am I selling? All of those things. That's the, the foundation. Um, and then from there, it's what are you looking for? What do you have? What don't you have? What do you think you need? What are you not sure you need? And it sort of goes out from there. How about this? What content do you think one should focus in on? So whether they're working with you or maybe they're just trying to brainstorm, like, is it education? Is it, you know, uh, building that community? Where do you think the efforts should be when you're just starting out? Not a very helpful answer. So I'll try to explain. It depends. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, thanks, Bridget. Thank you for your time. <laughs> that was really helpful. Um, but it really does depend. What What is it that you are trying to offer? Are you the education brand or are you the community brand? Lululemon 
very much a community focus, right? The local ambassadors that they have, you know, up on the walls and the people that they use in their marketing materials or their staff or their local ambassadors, like they are a community brand that sells athleisure. And so they can move from that point and you can see that consistency. So you kind of have to decide who you are and then focus on that. And it, how about in terms of other mistakes or common issues that you've seen people make when, when they're trying to do this or brainstorm the idea or even just start copy? What are some tips or advice from a mistake standpoint that they should avoid? I heard this term and I, I wish I could attribute it to the right person. So I apologize because I can't, but they're doing uh, what's called the word salad. They're basically just dumping all of the words that they think are keywords or SEO words, or they've heard other brands use and say, but they don't know what they mean. They don't make any sense. Um, basically doing a word salad would be the biggest mistake. So just, you know, those funny memes on uh, Instagram or wherever it is that talk about corporate culture that are like, let's circle back to the next pivot point of this crucial topic. <laughs> We'll, we'll take it way. offline. We'll yeah. take it off. We'll take, let's take this offline. It doesn't really mean a whole lot and it becomes comical at some point. But if you're just throwing it, we need to leverage the next big opportunity to address the market. Like that doesn't mean anything. So just be as simple and clear as you can. This is who we are. These are our values. This is where we put our foot in the sand. This is what we offer. And this is how it can help you. Yeah. And that's that's it. You don't have to dump in a bunch of other stuff that will organically come in time. Yeah, it's funny, this whole SEO or the keyword stuffing and the word salad you're talking about. And it, it, and I know this from the world of the YouTube side of things where, you know, ultimately you're not reaching out to the algorithm, you're reaching out to people, right? That's who's actually reading and watching your stuff. And, and that's who you want to be focused in on and, and prioritizing. And I think there's that idea of, yeah, you can keyword stuff all you want, but if it doesn't connect with them, um, it's not going to work. And I think that's kind of where you're hitting. I believe that's kind of what you're, what you're speaking to. Um, and obviously this all idea of authenticity. I think of it like if you call a company because you have a problem, let's say, and you go through all the automated system, but really to solve the problem, you want to talk to an agent, you're screaming agent at the phone, you're pressing zero a million times because you want that connection so that translates across copy across keywords across all of that you want you want the agent you want to talk to them you want to talk to yeah. the person on the other side right i cannot stand that chat bot <laughs> that little thing on the corner i cannot stand yeah. it. every time i see a chat bot i'm like please no <laughs> you are not Don't my virtual that. assistant you are not helpful to me <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Out of curiosity, what's, do you have a favorite social media platform or do you have one that you would recommend for a startup? If you're talking to consumers, Instagram, your basics, Instagram, TikTok, if you want to really sort of get into that world, um, even Facebook, but that would be sort of like a, what do they call me? A geriatric millennial, I think is the term. Um, <laughs> but if you want to get like the biggest audience, probably Instagram is your, is your best bet if you were going to focus solely in one area. Yeah. Here's an interesting question, because um, I know we've really talked about the brand story, and I totally understand that's really a, a long, you know, the long term game, right? But I'm curious to hear from your point of view, if there's a type of copy or a practice in the copy that you would recommend that would help with conversion, whether that means signing up on an email list or sales, is there anything that you kind of like go to or recommend that one tries to implement in their copy to help with conversions? I think just having an email list is huge because you own that, right? If Instagram changes their algorithm or whatever it is, you might lose that audience, but email, you always have them more readily available to you. Um, so if you can drive to that, that's important. Um, and then talk to them about what it is that they're purchasing, what they're actually looking at, what they're actually wanting and needing, and just keep like AG1, which is sort of drive that message home, repeated, 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 um, not to the point where you're annoyed right you you get a sense right if i get 10 emails from this company i'm annoyed i'm unsubscribing so if you start feeling that sense then it's time to back away but i think that that's a really great place to start because then you have a captive audience for anything you want to do down the line where you can communicate with them and you get almost real-time information because if you send out xyz email you know you could do a b testing so if you send an email copy a 
an email copy B, different segments of your email list, and you see which one does better. So which one converts, so which one drives sales, or whatever it is that your goal is. And you can see email B, half of our, 25% of our subscriber list unsubscribe, well then that's not how we, that's not how we're going to talk to people anymore. So I think that that's a really important way that you can pretty easily, you know, you don't need anything really fancy, see if your message is landing. Yeah. I think you hit on a couple of things as you were talking about, how do you get insight as to what your consumer wants? I think that email list helps answer that. You're asking your email list. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And this idea of constantly staying in touch, whether that's 10 emails or what the whatever the right number is but i think there's something to be said about staying in touch with them post-purchase a lot of the times it's content 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 get the purchase and then it's like silence <laughs> i think that's right. like the worst thing to do i feel like keep keep something going it doesn't have to be 10 emails it doesn't have to be another like extravagant email campaign or anything but i think there's something to be said about hey you know we're glad you're here and just thinking there's that relationship that you know should be cherished and built post-purchase i think so too and you have more space and the expectation is that the copy could be longer mm. so, hey fa founder of the company here saw that you purchased xyz product you know we're new to all of this what do you like about it how do you use it what do you put it in what do you, you can just have that conversation with people and you'd be surprised at what people are willing to share if you just ask them their opinion and honestly ask them their opinion right not just like well you complete this survey um but genuinely goes back to that making that connection so bridget what services do you offer? How can people get a hold of you? So happy you asked. Thank you so much. Uh, so right now I am available to take on more clients for copywriting support um, and digital marketing, digital marketing as well. So that can look like a really simple outline strategy that can look like part of your brand and style guide. It can look like a lot of different things. Um, and I would say Instagram is a great place to find me um, at mainly Bridget. And there's a link there um, to check out my portfolio. Or if you want to work with me, there's more information there as well. Fantastic. Bridget, thank you so much for doing this. I had a fun time. I learned a lot from you today. And of course, it was good to see you. Yeah, always good to see you. Thank you.